Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome back to my channel and another video. We are in my backyard, as you can see, and I have in front of me here today a, a, a winter sewing project that I did this year. Um, I did a little bit last year and it was successful. So this year I expanded how many seeds I started early. And this is one of them. This is called, this is called Dragon Tongue Mustard. And it was growing in here and I broke it free. And it, I'll show you, it was growing like this. This is carnation and this one's not ready to come out yet, but I just have that there to show you what it looks like. So I wanted to take this video to show you what the next step in this process is. And also to share with you um, how I use this as part of my mindfulness practice to help with stress reduction and anxiety and depression um, because sewing bees in the winter gave me something to do when I get very blue from not being able to be outside and when the weather's not so nice and we're all stuck in the house together. So I grew these and a bunch of others and I've um, pointed them out in other videos that I did. But I wanted to show you my process here to take these apart. Now I very gently lifted them out of here and now I'm going to very, very gently separate them. But before I do, I am going to add the inoculant and I want to show you what I use here. Um, this is the mycorrhizal inoculant and this promotes vigorous plant and root growth decreases the amount of watering and fertilization needed, enables the soil to retain nutrients for longer, and increase nutrient use and efficiency, and it creates healthier and denser roots, and it has improved ability to get nutrients and water from the soil, and it reduces transplant shock. So that's mainly why I use it, is to reduce transplant shock, which is what I'm gonna be doing now, when I, when I disturb the roots, that's considered transplant. Well, that could be considered transplant shock. Some plants don't like to have their roots disturbed at all. Kales generally are okay. This, or mustards, this is a mustard. Right here, this is kale. And I transplanted this one um, maybe about two weeks ago. And you can see how beautiful and green these are. Nice and strong, very healthy. Um, growing here and this is winter boar kale so um, I recommend that and then also I give my soil a little sprinkle and I put it in here a little sprinkle of this kale peel and this is just like vitamins for the soil to um, boost the, the nutrition in the soil and the soil fertility. And this is 2% um, soluble potash, which is one of the three ingredients needed for soil fertility, along with potassium, this is potassium, potash, um, phosphorus, and nitrogen are the three things that are necessary um, to, to grow anything in soil. So we wanna make sure that our grow medium is nice and healthy for these and then I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit in each of these holes that I made here and I also uh, moisten this before I get started with the transplants make sure my soil is nice and wet and um, this little process here takes no time but when I'm sitting out here all by myself well, sometimes I listen to um, lectures and um, for some classes that I'm taking. Um, and other times I just sit and use this as a mindful practice to clear my mind and to reset and rebalance. And uh, so now 
that we've done that, we're just going to very gently, very gently coax them apart. And then just start taking the ones that are nice and big and healthy. Very gently pulling them apart because we don't want to tear their roots. And I can see here, there's a whole plant and we want to stick it in there. And this is a very, very gentle process. Uh, you have to take your time. You have to go slow. You can't be in a hurry because then you'll break these delicate, very delicate stems. And one by one, you're just going to place them in the soil medium here. Now I've got a bigger one here. Now sometimes if I have a whole bunch, I'll just go through and take the biggest and the strongest. Um, depends on how much time I have. Like right now I have to pick up my daughter at work very soon. So I try to do what I can in between my mom duties which is usually running the kids from here to there, um, to work and to school and different things, activities. So I plan what I'm doing around what they're doing so that we can have peace and harmony within our home and I'm prepared for whatever, whatever demands they have of my time since I am here at home while I'm recovering. I have this wonderful opportunity that I get to have to recover from this painful condition that I have. Now, if I sit here too long, I will have a problem. So I do this in small, um, very small increments because, because of the arachnoiditis that I have. I can't sit very long. I can't do anything very long. So I just go from here to there. And I always, I have to stay moving. I have to stay active. Um, and I guess maybe that's just my nature. I just, I feel like I always need to be productive. So I try to just keep doing things to keep myself busy. Always moving the ball forward if I can. And, uh, but also recognizing when it's time to rest. If I push myself too far, I don't want to go into a relapse. So. I'm learning the nuances of this, this problem that I have so that I can manage it as naturally as I possibly can. Now this one came pulling out and it may have shortened the root. So we're just going to hope for the best. And now I plant this whole entire tray. You can see there's 32 spaces here. And uh, that's, that's quite a bit, but not all of them will make it, um, I've noticed. You know, that's, that's just the way it goes. Some will be stronger than others. Some won't take the stress of being separated, uh, but some will. So that's why we plant extra. And we don't get bent out of shape if some of them die, we always say a blessing over our seeds and over the plants as well. Um, just like you would bless food before you ate it. Um, you know, just recognizing that this is, this is the beginning of food, um, but also the sacredness of these plants and, and all life, all life is sacred. And the more you treat it that way and the more gratitude you have for what you have, the better off you are in life. So I'll end the video here so I don't make one that's too long. Nobody likes to watch long videos. I just wanted to show this process, how easy it is for these transplants. And then here you can see these have been sitting in here for a couple of days. Now we've had incredibly warm weather Today is March 15th. Oh, the Ides of March, isn't it? And, uh, you know, we, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, today is in the 70s. Again, yesterday was, yesterday was nice and bright and sunny. Today it's overcast, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's still very warm. Still very warm for this time of the year. And I see 
trees are leaping out and budding. The buds are opening and I have a feeling that might be a little too early. I'm hoping that we don't lose a lot of, well, even my nectarine tree out front is um, the buds are starting to open and I feel like it's a little early. It's a little early, but I document everything um, just to see the changes from year to year and to know what to expect, um, you know, when the process starts with the, with the fruit trees because I, I like to go around and give them some fertilizer when they're ready to, to flower. And I have done that. I, I try to do that when I know rain is coming. So get it nice and soaked into the ground. Ooh, there's a bumblebee down there. All right. So, so we'll end this video here and I hope this inspires you to get out there. Right now this I did in the winter, but this I did not that long ago. So you can, when you're dealing with the cold crops, you can get them started early, put them out early. All right, so I hope this inspires you to do that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.